Hi everyone and welcome to this session which is part of the already the fourth edition of the Microsoft Meet Community event for Windows Virtual Desktop. So I'm excited to be here today to share some of my knowledge about automated deployments for Windows Virtual Desktop. So as you might know, there are many ways that lead to Rome, meaning there are many different ways to deploy Windows Virtual Desktop in the Azure Cloud. Whether it's using the Azure portal and the UI in there or all kinds of automated ways, you have options to choose from and that's great. So in this session, we're going to take a look at a specific option is using ARM templates and using JSON templates to do a declarative deployment of Windows Virtual Desktop. And then we'll take a look at Project Bicep to even further empower those deployments using the Bicep language. My name is Greg Bresson. I have been working at Wartel for many years and I enjoy being in the space of remote application and desktop delivery. So I work with technologies like RDS, VDI, Remote App, Windows Virtual Desktop, mostly on the Azure platform, and I enjoy working with automated and infrastructure as code technologies as well, hence the combination of the technologies in this session. So if you want to reach out now or afterwards, uh, my contact details are on the slide. Happy to talk about this and other topics some more in the future if you want. For now, let's uh, dive in because we have a lot of content uh, to cover. So I want to start by sharing this diagram, and this is the Windows Virtual Desktop architecture. So if you have been working with Windows Virtual Desktop, or if you've attended previous editions of this conference, you probably recognize this architecture. So I'm not going to cover all of the components in this architecture, but I want to use this to sort of point out which technology we're using, which automated technology we're using to get to the end result, which is a fully working Windows Virtual Desktop environment. So the first step we'll take is uh, deploying the Windows Virtual Desktop backplane. This is sort of laying the foundation. So in this step, we're using bicep code, bicep automated code to create host pools, application groups, and workspaces, but also surrounding infrastructure like networking uh, and profile uh, storage containers and also key vaults, et cetera. And then in the second step, we'll deploy image management. So the same bicep deployment will also deploy a fully functional Azure image builder environment, which allows us to create template images in an automated way. We'll cover that in detail as well. And then the last step is going to be the actual host deployment. So this will be based on the Windows Virtual Desktop backplane we created in step one. This will be based on the template image that we automatically created in step two. And we'll use that information to start adding session host servers to the host pool and make that available in Windows Virtual Desktop. So let's start by taking a look at the Azure Resource Manager engine, because this is the front door, if you will, to all of the Azure resource providers, whether it's compute or network or storage or Windows Virtual Desktop. It is the front door to all of these resources based on what's declared in the resource provider. So we have different ways of communicating with the Azure Resource Manager engine. We can use the Azure portal, CLI, PowerShell, SDK, or even direct REST API calls towards that ARM engine. So in this case, as we said, we're going to use ARM templates, so JSON templates, which allows us to declare resources and feed that ARM template into the ARM engine and have all of the objects be created for us based on infrastructure as code. That's the first piece of technology we'll be using. And then the second piece is Azure Image Builder, and this allows us to create our template images in a fully automated way. So it works in three different stages, three different phases. It starts right by defining the source. So the source can be any operating system, but most likely Windows 10 multi-user, uh, for example, version 20 H2. And then in the customizer phase, this is where you define all of the customized steps. For example, you might want to install the Microsoft 365 applications or Teams or OneDrive or any of your corporate line of business applications. Uh, and at this point, you might also want to do customizations, like, for example, uninstalling certain apps or doing optimizations to the image as well. And then in step number three, in phase number three, you define the distributed phase. So this allows you to define what the end result of the Azure Image Builder process could be. So the image could then be uh, transformed into a VHD file, or more, more appropriately for Windows Virtual Desktop, it can become a managed image or maybe even as part of a shared image gallery. So this process allows you to automate all of these steps. And in the end result, you have a template image ready to deploy for Windows Virtual Desktop. 
So this allows you to do template image management in a really fast and automated way. For example, if your Windows operating system changes, a new Windows version comes out, you can just run this Azure Image Builder sequence again with the same customizations, and you will end up with a new version of your template image inside your shared image gallery, which can then be selected as part of your Windows Virtual Desktop deployment. And then the third technology will be Azure DevOps. So we'll be using Azure DevOps to deploy the session host service based on the template image that we just created using the Windows Virtual Desktop backplane that we created using Project Bicep. So why are we introducing Azure DevOps at this stage? You will probably not redeploy your entire Windows Virtual Desktop deployment every week or every month, right? All of the infrastructure components like your FS Logics and your network and your host pools and your uh, objects themselves, they will probably remain and have a longer lifetime. But the session host servers you're deploying, you probably want to actively uh, update those along the way, either with Windows updates or application updates, etc. So in this case, we're going to use Azure DevOps to do a full automated uh, deployment, which we can repeat uh, many times with a new version of the operating system to create new session host servers and replace the existing ones. So we'll use Azure DevOps in combination with Bicep to make that process complete. And I also want to point out that there are ways to extract applications from the operating system and from the template image, for example, by using MSAX Appetex technology. So by extracting applications from the template image, you reduce the number of times that you need to recreate your images when a certain application updates. So there are great sessions during this conference about MSAX Appetex uh, as well. So I can highly encourage you to watch those as well. So going back to where we started about the infrastructure as code part, this is for the Azure engine based on JSON language, based on JavaScript object notation. So it means that we can create JSON templates and feed them into that ARM engine we talked about. So here you can see a empty skeleton of what such a JSON file looks like. So we have parameters in order for us to customize this template to our needs. We have variables that allow us to do certain concatenations or create specific strings or uh, certain values we want to recreate and reuse throughout our template. But for the big part, this is all about resources. And this is where you, as based on an infrastructure as code level, declare the resources you want to create, whether that's virtual machines or network adapters, or in this case, entire Windows virtual desktop deployments. In terms of tooling, you, basically you can use any editor that you want, but I can encourage you to start using VS Code because it has a lot of uh, IntelliSense and integration with the Azure portal, making for a much better and much cleaner authoring experience as well. So what are some of the common challenges with JSON templates and ARM templates? We have an example on the screen right now, but as you can see, this is not really easy to read or easy to author, right? There's a lot of syntax overhead with all of the brackets and commas and semicolons going on. So uh, yes, ARM templates are very powerful uh, and Microsoft has invested in them a lot, but they also realize that the authoring experience is not that good. So this is why they introduced Project Bicep. So what is that Project Bicep if you're not or less familiar? Project Bicep is a domain-specific language, a DSL specifically for the Azure portal, allowing you to declare resources that you want to create. So you might be thinking, isn't that exactly what ARM also does? And you're right. Uh, and the second question is, does that mean that Project Bicep will replace ARM templates? But the answer is no. It will become a uh, transparent abstraction layer on top of ARM and ARM templates. So this allows you to have a drastically simplified authoring experience of your templates compared to JSON templates. So it will have a much cleaner syntax, it will be much easier to author and to read, and it will also have support for modularity to be able to reuse parts of your code, and we'll see that in a demo as well. So where do we position Project Bicep in the overall uh, infrastructure's code, or in the overall ARM engine, if you will? So on the right-hand side, we still have that same diagram with the blue bar, the Azure Resource Manager engine, which was our front door to all of the resource providers in Azure. That remains the same. We still have ARM templates on top of that, where in which we declare our resources that we feed into that ARM engine. That also still remains. But the thing that changes is the transparent abstraction layer on top of it, which is the Bicep language. So without having to touch any ARM code, you can start declaring your resources in the Bicep language instead. And what you then do is you transpile that Bicep file into an ARM template, and you feed that into the ARM engine. So um, that also means that you have the option to do modularities, to, to reuse your code for a specific uh, 
uh, objects or specific resources you're going to be creating. And this project is fully open source as well, which means that it has full transparency. The entire project is on GitHub for others to contribute to or to log errors or to do pull requests. It is a full uh, uh, open source project and also driven by the community who also are adding examples in there. So if you're interested in that, you go and visit aka.ms forward slash bicep. It will take you through that GitHub page as well. I will also be sharing that link at the end of the session. So that means that we can create any service in the Azure environment using Bicep language and using that ARM language. And that is because both Bicep and ARM language for their state, they look directly towards Azure. That, so that means that if a new service comes out, if a new API version comes out, you can directly use that and directly have ARM template and Bicep language create those resources for you. And that of course includes the Windows Virtual Desktop services. So what are we going to create in this demo? We'll start by some of the foundational stuff. So we'll create a VNet with a couple of subnets. We'll do our peering towards our Active Directory domain services VNet. We'll then start by creating uh, WVD workspaces and host pools and application groups. We will also create an automated Windows with your desktop template host VM, which allows you to get started with, uh, for example, your uh, testing your applications or doing MSAX app attacks, etc. We'll also be adding Azure file services for our profile management and Azure Key Vault to store secrets for our domain join and for our local admin credentials. And then we'll create a full Azure log analytics database as well, including the configuration for each of these components so that all of the components are sending the telemetry data towards the uh, log analytics database. And then we'll also create a full Azure image builder setup, so including all of the components that are needed to start those three steps within the Azure image builder sequence. And finally, we'll also create a template specification, which is something new that we're also going to be demoing in this session as well. So without further ado, let's kick off this demo. And the first step is going to be, since this is infrastructure as code, we'll use uh, VS Code uh, to get started. So as you can see, I have already an empty file here, which is wvd-resources.bicep. This is going to be my first bicep file. And just to show you that we have a bicep installed, if we do a bicep dash dash version, we can see that 03.1 version is currently installed. If you want to go ahead and install it inside your VS Code, simply go to the extensions and search for the bicep language there. So the first thing we'll do, um, just to show you how the transpilation uh, works, um, if I uh, select a bicep or if I type a bicep build and then the name of this file, we can then transpile this empty yet bicep file into a JSON file. So if we open up the JSON equivalent that's now being created for us, this is already an empty valid skeleton of a JSON file. It will not create anything because I didn't define any resources yet, but just to show you how that transpilation works. So let's go ahead and add a couple of resources to our first bicep file. And so let's start by typing the word, uh, the keyword resources followed by uh, HP to give it a name and then we'll search for host pool. And we can easily already see that IntelliSense is kicking in and allowing us to see all of the resource types, including the API versions. So let's select the latest API version. And of course, we need to define a couple of properties for this host pool. So let's start by giving it a name. So let's do wvd-com-hp. And it's going to need a location. And just because it has been recently added, let's do West Europe. And we're going to need a couple of uh, properties. So let's add uh, the first property, which is going to be the host pool type. And we'll select, uh, in this case, person uh, pooled. And then we'll do the preferred app group action. And we'll use desktop. And we'll do a load balancing type, which is going to be breadth first. So we now we have declared our first object, a host pool, just like that. So let's continue and create another resource. And uh, you might uh, have uh, guessed it, that is going to be um, the uh, application group. So again, we do the keyword AG. We'll search for application group, uh, not a security group, but of course a desktop virtualization group with the latest API version. And again, we're going to give that a name. In this case, that will be wvd-com dash application group. We're going to give that a location, which is going to be West Europe. And, uh, and I missed a typo there. Let me just quickly uh, correct that. And I need a couple of uh, properties um, to go with that. So at least, uh, at least need a application group type, which is again going to be desktop. 
Uh, and this also allows me to provide what's called the host pool arm path. So this is the property of connecting the application group and the host pool together. So now the power of bicep also kicks in because I can now refer to properties of a previously declared object. So I can simply say hp.id, which, which means that we're referring to the resource ID of the host pool, just like that. So let's create the last object, and you probably guessed it, it's going to be a workspace. So let's search for the desktop virtualization workspace uh, in this list. And oh, there we go, the latest API version. And again, let's provide it with a name. So that's going to be wvdcom workspace We'll give it a location, which again is going to be West Europe. Uh, and it needs uh, at least uh, one property, at least that's easy for us uh, to do now, is uh, configure the application group reference. So now I can refer to the application group ID. So the resource ID of the previously declared application group, just like that. So we now finished the first uh, bicep file with the host pool, the application group, and a workspace. So I could transpile this into a JSON file and then feed that into an ARM, temp uh, ARM engine and have our objects be created in the Azure portal. Before we do that, however, let's create a couple of parameters to make it a uh, well, more uh, reusable piece of code. So we'll uh, type the keyword param. And the first thing we'll create is a prefix, which is going to be of type uh, string. So that prefix, we can then use that to uh, change the names of the objects we're creating to do a concatenation in this case. So we'll add the prefix that we just created. And we'll add that same prefix to all of the objects, all of the three objects that we just uh, created, right? So now the name of these things is going to be the prefix concatenated with the stuff that I have declared right here. So the second parameter I want to introduce is actually the location because we're using that a couple of times. Let's make that a, oops, let's make that a string and also give it a default value, which again is going to be West Europe. So now we can replace that hard-coded uh, location with um, the parameter that we just defined inside our template. So there's one more uh, uh, parameter I want to introduce, uh, which is a parameter uh, called expiration time. And I'll explain in a bit why that is, but let's just enter the expiration time. It's going to be a string and it's going to be equal to the uh, current time based on a uh, U format. So the reason I create the expiration time is because when I create a host pool, you might be aware that as soon as I start adding session host service to it, I first need to create what's called a registration info token, which is the token that the agent uses to connect to that host pool. So let's go ahead and enter that property inside the host pool now, which is going to be the registration info. It has two properties at least. So the token operation is going to be update because we're updating the current registration token. And the expiration time then, so the time that is going to be valid, is uh, equal to uh, date time, which is a function, and then followed by the expiration time parameter, and then followed by something that's called post time two hours. So we now define that we're creating a registration uh, token for this host pool that is valid for the next two hours. So before we get started with the uh, with the deployment, there's two more properties I actually want to two more parameters I actually want to add, which are the preferred application group type, which is going to be a string. Um, and also that we previously had was the application group type, which is also going to be a string. So let me explain you why that is. So we just created the uh, bicep file, which allows us to deploy these resources, right? So a single host pool, single application group and single workspace. But let's take it step one step further and actually uh, decide to use this as a module and have another file create multiple editions of these objects uh, at the same time. So in order to do that, I have prepared another file here, which is called main.bicep. So as the name uh, probably implies, this is our main file, our main deployment file, which contains uh, a couple of things. So in this file, I have changed the target scope from the default um, resource group level towards the subscription level, which allows me to define multiple resource groups and multiple objects at the same time. And I also have two parameters here. One parameter is again that West Europe location, and the other parameter is actually an array of different 
uh, Windows Virtual Desktop backplane uh, properties. So I have one for my full desktop and I have one for my real applications or remote app applications. And then I'm going to create the first resource in this main file, which is a resource group, which is called bicep-wd-loop and with a location. It's an easy object, right? So now we're going to actually call the file that we just used, that we just created a couple of minutes ago, which was a wvd-resources.bicep file. And we're going to use the keyword module to call that file and have it deployed a couple of times. So here you can see that I have a loop in here, which is recently added to the bicep language, which allows me to uh, deploy this module a couple of times. So as you might have uh, guessed, we're going to deploy it two times, one for the full desktop and one for the remote app environment. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, the first thing that I would normally do is do a bicep build and then uh, the main.bicep file. So similarly, I now get the main.json file, which is a valid JSON file I can feed into the ARM engine and have these objects created. And again, take a look at the complexity and that we went to 142 lines of code just to do that. Um, so there's a couple of ways. I could feed this JSON file, this transpiled file into the ARM uh, engine. Uh, so for example, by using a PowerShell commandlet. So I could do a new AZ deployment. I could specify the template file, the deployment file, and then the location. So it will then take the transpiled JSON file and start deploying the resources that we need. However, I want to show you a different way, which was recently introduced as well, which allows me to not have to do that JSON, um, the JSON transpile action, but actually provide the, the uh, source bicep file directly to Azure. So in this case, I'm using the Azure CLI. So I'm going to say Azure deployment and create uh, in that subscription a, uh, a couple of objects that are defined inside this bicep file within the location West Europe. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, kick that off. So what this actually does is this provides uh, Azure. We're now going to provide Azure with the main.bicep file. And on the fly, it will um, transpile that bicep file into a JSON uh, uh, itself and then provide that JSON file directly into the Azure portal, which should result in the creation of a couple of objects. So we're going to create a new resource group and we're going to create uh, two sets of application groups, host pools and workspaces. So let's take a look at the result and switch to the Azure portal. And let's do a refresh here. And you can see that we have a new resource group now being created, which is called the one that we had defined in the bicep file. If we go to the deployment, we can actually see that we have two different deployments. So if we use a module multiple times, it actually results into multiple nested deployments, one for a mode app and one for a full desktop. And as you can see inside this resource group, if I uh, group by type here, that we actually have uh, two application groups, two host pools and two workspaces ready to go. And also if I would open up one of these application groups, we can also see that because we are integrating those together by referencing those properties, the host pool is in fact connected to the um, application group as well as to the host pool. So we are ready to go. So that was our first demo of getting started with Project Bicep, just to show you how easy it is to author these compared to uh, JSON language. So let's now step up our game and uh, talk about the actual deployment itself. So remember that we had that uh, diagram of the architecture with the three different steps, right? The first step is laying the foundation with the Windows Virtual Desktop deployment. The second step was Azure Image Builder and all of the template uh, uh, objects that are needed. And the second step was actually adding the session host service and using DevOps uh, for that. That's going to be this demo. So again, we have the same uh, approach. If you take a look at the left hand side, we again have a main.bicep file, which is going to be our main file. I'll cover that in just a second. And we have uh, a whole bunch of bicep files, which are all of them, which are modules. So again, we have the same approach of a single module creating a couple of resources and a main file calling those module files. I'll take you through a couple of these module uh, files. So again, we have a WVD backplane module file, which contains uh, a couple of parameters that we can use a little bit more than we had in just a second, but just, you know, uh, it, will, it will create the same object. So it will create uh, a Windows for your desktop, a host pool, an application group, a workspace, uh, etc. And then we have another bicep file, which contains our uh, networking declaration. So this again takes a couple of parameters, but this defines the creation of a VNet and including two subnets, one for my production and one for my acceptance uh, environment for Windows Virtual Desktop. 
It also creates the peer-to-peer -to -peer towards my uh, Active Directory domain services VNet in order to make sure that domain joins works and all of the other uh, stuff can be accessed from the Windows Virtual Desktop Session hosts as well. We have another BICEP file, another module here, which creates our uh, log analytics information. So this actually creates a new log analytics database, which we can then use to create uh, diagnostics information and have all of the Windows virtual desktops and all of the virtual machines send that telemetry data towards this log analytics database to get information about uh, the insights and the health of our environment. We also have a BICEP file that creates um, file services. So this goes ahead and creates a couple of storage accounts. Uh, so I was going to create one storage account for my Azure Image Builder process, which we'll cover in just a second. So we'll create a file share for my software as well as for my scripts that are needed for Azure Image Builder. And also it will create a second uh, storage account, which is going to be for our FS Logics profiles. So this is going to be an Azure File Services uh, uh, file share containing a location where we can store the FS Logics profiles for our WVD environment. We also have a BICEP file that creates a key vault. So this creates a key vault object into the Azure uh, uh, portal, into the Azure environment, and then adds two different secrets. So one secret is for a domain join password and one for a local admin passwords. And these are of course needed once we are deploying the session host servers, we're going to add them to the domain. So the DevOps deployment will actually get these key vault uh, uh, secrets and use them throughout the deployments in uh, the Azure DevOps step in, in the third step. And then we have uh, an, um, a BICEP file that creates our uh, shared image uh, gallery which is, has again a couple of parameters, but it will create uh, a shared image gallery, a new gallery image for a uh, new shared image gallery for us, a new role definition with all of the permissions that are needed. It's going to add that role assignment to the identity that we need, and it's going to create uh, an image definition. So this is where we define the image uh, SKU, the publisher, the offer, the size, uh, etc. And also we have, of course, the whole Azure Image Builder process, but we're going to show you that after we have uh, deployed this, um, because we're going to give some, some time to, dive, to deep dive into that uh, section as well. So I mentioned that main file, so I have that two.main bicep file here, and this is the main file from which I'm going to call all of these modules to bring them all together into one single deployment. So again, notice that I have changed the target scope to subscription because in this case, we are actually going to create multiple resource groups that contain multiple resources. Uh, and I have also have a couple of uh, secure parameters here. They have a, a, a decorator here, which allows me to define that this is a secure parameter. Uh, so these parameters are going to be passed using a parameter file uh, during the deployment. So I have a lot of parameters in this file. That's because uh, I'm you know, connecting a lot of modules, of course. Uh, but the reason why I'm uh, explaining that as well is because I have all kinds of default values here, which we normally should not have or do not have. Normally, you will, you will have these inside a parameter file that you can use uh, during the deployment uh, time. But just for demo sakes, I have added all of the default values in here just to get a better understanding of what we're passing in terms of parameters to this deployment. So let's scroll down to all of the parameters and take a look at the first resource we are creating, which is actually a bunch of resource groups. So let me just scroll this down. Here is uh, the section of a uh, resource group. So this is the area where we define all of the resource groups we are going to create as part of this deployment. So we're going to create one for our networking, for our storage, for our Windows virtual desktop backplane, uh, for our session host, our monitoring, our key fault, uh, et cetera. So I think it's going to be eight or nine different uh, resource groups. And then we're going to create a couple of objects, a couple of resources we also need, like for example, a VNet uh, role definition that we need and an assignment. Uh, but let's take a look at the, um, the actual module creations here. So again, here we have that same uh, module uh, keyword here, which allows us to defer, to refer to one of the BICEP modules. In this case, the module that creates the Windows Virtual Desktop Backplane. Notice that I have that same looping in here. So uh, with one within one piece of code, I can run this multiple times. And in this case, we're going to again create a Windows Virtual Desktop deployment for our acceptance and for our, um, our production environment. Similarly, we also are also calling different other modules. So we have a network module here, the one that you just explained. This is the way we are calling that module with all of the parameters. And by the way, all of these module um, 
de uh, declarations also have a scope with them. And this is where I refer to the resource group that I have created before in order to allow to, uh, in order for this object to be created in a specific uh, resource group, for in this case for networking. So similarly, I have, uh, you might have guessed, all of kinds of module uh, calls for all of the modules that we have on the left-hand side. So for our monitoring, for our shared image gallery, uh, for our file services, uh, etc. So let's go ahead and actually also transpile this uh, bicep file. So let's do a bicep build and then um, to main.bicep. So now that we have the JSON uh, equivalent here, and if we scroll down, we can see that this is becoming a huge JSON file of over 2,000 lines of code. Now, the reason this is such a big document is that because I'm, again, transpiling it, uh, I'm, I'm only transpiling the main file, but because I'm uh, connecting to other modules, I'm calling other modules, all of these modules are also going to be transpiled and added into a single JSON file. So this JSON file will just deploy all of the infrastructure for Windows Virtual Desktop, including all of the properties. So actually, let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. So let's switch to uh, that same demo uh, PowerShell script we had before. And again, we have the two different options here. So one we can do, which is what we just did in the previous demo, we used the AZ CLI deployment create with uh, the main bicep file. In this case, we're gonna do it a little different. We're gonna use the PowerShell equivalent. So we're gonna use new ASA deployment, the template file. So this is actually the transpiled file with the line with the 2000 lines of code. And we're going to pass a couple of parameters based on uh, the parameter file that we specified. And it's going to have a deployment name and a location in this case, West Europe again. So let's go ahead and kick that off. So now we are giving uh, the ARM engine our 2000 line uh, JSON file, which is then going to be uh, used to deploy all of the objects that we declared. So it's gonna start by creating that eight or nine different resource groups. And from within those resource groups, it's going to deploy a couple of nested deployments for uh, our file services, our Windows Virtual Desktop backplane, uh, the key vaults and all of the other objects that we had. So you might have guessed it's going to take uh, a couple of minutes, obviously, to uh, complete. But let's switch to the Azure portal, go to resource groups, and actually refresh this here. And we can see that we already have a lot of resource groups uh, here. So these were just created in a couple of seconds now. So we have uh, a resource group for our backplane, file services, key vault, et cetera. These are now all on the way on, uh, in the process of being created. So to give you a couple of uh, examples, let's, let's take a look at the backplane for uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. Again, we have uh, the objects, the same objects here, right? So the host pool, in this case, it's one workspace with two different host pools, one for a remote app, one for, uh, one for full desktop, uh, which are available. And again, if I go into the application group, we can see that these objects are also nicely uh, tied together. We also have different resource groups, one, for example, for the... Um, uh, let's take a look at the file services uh, first. So we have two different uh, storage accounts here, one for my Azure Image Builder process, the one we had before. It already contains two predefined containers, one for my Azure Image Builder scripts and one for my Azure Image Builder software. And we have a uh, another resource group here, which is, um, for example, for our uh, networking. So we have a networking resource group here created with a VNet, and this VNet contains a couple of subnets, one for my production and one for my acceptance environment. Um, and last but not least, we have uh, a key vault being created here. So this key vault is uh, created on the fly with two different secrets in here, which contain our domain join password and our local admin password as well. So these are all created. And um, let's now switch to the, um, the step number two. So this was step number one, laying the foundation using Bicep to create all of the components that are needed for my Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Let's switch to step number two, which is actually using that Azure Image Builder process and deploying new session host servers to our uh, environment. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, let's open up DevOps and let's take a look at what we have here. So this is my DevOps uh, environment and inside the DevOps environment, I have a repo which contains a bicep file. 
So this is another bicep file, and this what this bicep file does is it is going to add uh, session. Uh, it's going to deploy new virtual machines to the Azure portal based on the template image that we defined in our Azure Image Builder sequence. It's going to add them to the domain, install the Windows Virtual Desktop agent, and add them to the Windows Virtual Desktop host pool. So it's going to use that uh, in, uh, in in DevOps. So this is just a local repo that we have here. And the other thing we have inside our uh, pipeline here is a library. And this library refers to the uh, key fold that we just created. So you will see this refresh in a couple of seconds because we just created a new key vault. So let's refer to that one that we just created and click uh, authorize here. And this allows DevOps to actually read that key vault and get the two secrets uh, out there. So let's select the domain join and the local admin, hit OK and hit save here. And now lastly, we're going to create a new release. So let's go to releases, go to the bicep one, create a new release. And we are going to select the uh, add to existing host pool bicep, uh, open it up and actually uh, deploy it. So once it's going to deploy, let me explain to you what it uh, does. So this is a uh, DevOps environment. It does a couple of tasks. It will first download, uh, of course, the um, uh, the secrets from that Azure uh, key file that we need during this uh, deployment. And it will then actually grab that bicep file that we had, transpile it into a JSON file and feed that into the ARM engine. It will also create a new uh, key that we'll use for the host pool, right? So the uh, key that's needed for adding the agents right now. So right now you can see it's in the process of installing the bicep CLI automatically, transpiling the file, the bicep file into a JSON. And now it's going to run Azure PowerShell to create uh, that registration key that we need for the host pool. So it's going to take a couple of uh, seconds and right after this is going to actually feed that ARM template into the ARM engine and have all of the resources uh, be created. So we'll uh, switch back to this process uh, uh, in a couple of minutes to see what the end result uh, is. But let's actually take a step back and talk about that Azure Image Builder process that we had before this. So Let's go back to the, uh, let's just wait a couple of seconds before this completes. So we actually can see that it's going to deploy our Azure resources in just a second. There we go. So it's now waiting for the ARM uh, uh, to be able to uh, deploy. So we'll come back to this in just a second. So going back to the resource group and opening up the uh, template image resource group, this is where our um, Azure Image Builder properties and Azure Image Objects, uh, Azure Image Builder Objects have been created. So what has been created here is a shared image gallery, a managed version of the image, a template image, as well as an image definition. So if I open up the uh, Azure Image Gallery here, we can see that we have a definition in here and there's a valid version in here. So this version contains the customization step that we did. Remember those three steps that we had with the, uh, the source, the um, um, the modifications and then the distribution, this is the end result of that. So this is a template image version that's available in the Azure portal. And this is actually the one that we passed to the um, deployment in DevOps to be able to do that in an automated way. So the other thing I want to show you is that while this uh, deployment is still running in the background, it takes a couple of minutes to uh, complete, there are also other ways to deploy that same uh, bicep or same JSON file in an automated way. And that's something that's called a template specification. So uh, what bicep also created for us is a uh, template spec uh, object in the Azure portal. And if I, open it up, if I open it up, it doesn't contain any versions yet because I want to show you how to create a new version. If I would do that here, I would specify uh, v0.1, uh, for example, and I can now enter in the template I don't want to have. So let's switch back to VS Code and actually grab the same uh, JSON file that is also available in the um, VS Code area and paste that in here and save that. So this now allows other administrators to also do the same deployment that is running now in the Azure uh, DevOps environment, but then doing it sort of manual from the Azure portal. So I could say uh, deploy here, 
which allows me to deploy this custom template towards the Azure portal and essentially do the same thing as the uh, DevOps environment. So by passing all of the parameters here, I'm able to select different parameters. So for example, if I want to have a different subnet or different network or different organizational unit, or if I want to have a hundred servers instead of one, I can uh, change all of these parameters here, which uh, some of them have nice uh, drop down boxes uh, as well. Uh, and allows me to do, do the same deployment. So add such in host servers to the domain, have the Windows Virtual Desktop agent be installed and add them to the host pool. So what it also has is a couple of uh, optional things, like for example, uh, installing it on a uh, NV6 machine. So this is a GPU empowered uh, machine. And I can say, I wanna have this as the VM size. And by the way, also install the GPU driver on that. So this is a custom extension inside my template image, inside my template object, which also goes ahead and installs the latest uh, GPU driver for, in this case, the NVIDIA machine, which allows us to use and leverage a GPU from within a Windows Virtual Desktop host pool. So just to show you uh, what that looks like in, um, in an example, I have uh, a, um, a demo here. And this demo is actually logging on to the Windows Virtual Desktop client, opening up a GPU empowered machine, and taking a look at a use case for Windows Virtual Desktop with GPU, which is in fact a uh, gaming scenario. So you might have seen other demos from me by using a uh, flight simulator and uh, Google SketchUp and stuff like this. This is one of the latest demos where we're actually playing Fortnite from within a session uh, running inside Windows Virtual Desktop. So as you can see, the experience is pretty good. It's pretty smooth. And uh, this allows me to leverage uh, the GPU inside this machine. I think that this is an NV6 uh, NVIDIA powered uh, machine. And the, uh, well, the gaming experience uh, is pretty good considering that this is running in, uh, in the Azure cloud based on, uh, based on Windows Virtual Desktop. So uh, if you want to get started with that, uh, this is a great way, of course, to, uh, to test it out. Uh, you can imagine this is what one of the more fun demos uh, to create, obviously. Uh, but just to show you some of the capabilities of uh, having heavy applications, not of course not an application in this case, a game, using a GPU inside that, uh, inside that environment. So just to show you uh, what the power is of, uh, of GPUs in, uh, in that case. So uh, let's switch back and see that it's about four minutes to complete. So before we uh, take a final look at the end result uh, here, Let's go ahead and get back to the uh, slide deck to uh, uh, cover a couple of things. So uh, the thing I wanted to share with you is uh, a piece of roadmap. So just to show you where Bicep is coming from, the technology itself and where it's going through, it all started with an 0.1 version back in August last year. This was the first alpha release uh, of Project Bicep. And we now currently are at that 0.31 version, which is the latest version that just recently uh, came out, which has full feature parity with ARM templates. So uh, it's pretty impressive that we've seen uh, from August till now uh, that we have a full feature parity with ARM, including things like uh, loop and conditionals and the decompiler stuff as well. So we do also have options to decompile a JSON file back to uh, Bicep. And there's full integration as we've seen with the Azure CLI and Azure PowerShell uh, as well. So, and as far, right now it is ready for production use as well. So you can go ahead and uh, decompile your own JSON files and start using Bicep, or as we've seen in the demo, start using Bicep uh, from scratch uh, as well. So let's switch back to the Azure portal one more time to actually see the result. So let's go ahead and take a look at a DevOps environment. And in fact, it actually completed within uh, a good uh, 10 minutes. So taking a look at the Azure uh, portal environment, let's go into that resource group where those hosts should have been deployed. And we have a successful deployment here, which took about nine minutes to complete. And we have now inside this host pool, I'm sorry, inside this resource group, 10 session host servers available. So if we, if we go back to the uh, backplane resource group where the uh, uh, host pool is actually hosted, open it up, we can see that we have a total of 10 virtual machines now available and ready uh, to go. So just to show you the power of the combination of Bicep, uh, Azure Image Builder and DevOps to get, uh, to get started. So finishing up, 
I want to share with you a quick uh, call to action. If you uh, enjoyed this uh, content, you want to get started with Project Bicep, go and visit aka.ms forward slash bicep. It contains a lot of content in terms of uh, documentation and scripts and stuff like that to get started, but also a lot of community efforts. So a lot of uh, example projects, including the one that I just uh, demoed, which is available in there as well. Uh, but a lot of bicep, other bicep files have been contributed in the meantime. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. I hope this was valuable content uh, for you. If you want to connect, uh, feel free to do so. My contact details are on the screen. And uh, well, I do hope that you're going to stick around for the rest of the day. We have some great content uh, coming up. And lastly, I want to thank the organizers for having me uh, today. It's been my pleasure and I uh, hope to see you again soon.